Now, in terms of origins of this program, essentially, we've just talked through six qualities of a high quality curriculum resources and high quality math program. As it's likely become apparent, and it's to you through today, and as it has become apparent to us over an extremely extended uh, period of time, this is a hell of a lot to take in, into account. Um, having the knowledge to do this is enormous. And even for those who have the knowledge, there's a huge workload burden um, to doing this. Tony, Mork and I have all independently worked in multiple schools as well as consulted to multiple schools. And very often we present a lot of the content that we've presented today over an extended period of time with lots of support and so on. Uh, but ultimately the crunch comes down to a school going, okay, we know all this stuff now. We now we just need to do the hard work of, of, of making the resources and learning how to use them. Now, some schools can do that and do do that, but it, in our experience, it is a minority and that's because this is a massive challenge. And so inevitably we find out people asking us, okay, great, but what is the program that I can use that's going to do this for me because I simply don't have the time um, to, to dedicate to this? So this is, our answer has traditionally been, unfortunately, there's no single program. Like you can use this program and this, this has some daily reviews and you can kind of use some of them, but you probably need to adapt them. This one has some good uh, lesson recommendations and that kind of works as well. But there hasn't been a, a single unified approach. So that's why we've been working really hard for the last two years on a pro program that we're calling the EMP. This is the team, uh, Dave, Tony and I, you know from today, this is a Dr. Wendy Taylor. We're, Wendy is actually the, the massive brains behind the program. She's, we were debating her IQ today. It's probably about 220, uh, but she she generally stays in a, behind the scenes because she does a lot, of, a lot of the hard work. And this is of course, uh, Michael Roberts, who's a, a been a great driving force behind the program and starting it off in particular as well. So we've been working really hard behind the scenes and we've come up with a program that includes three, at least three, probably more, but we're going to talk about three of them today. Three key components. One is highly structured lessons. Two is formative and summative assessments and three is daily review. So I'm just going to quickly um, show you each of these now. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a, a lesson and we thought that the best way to, would just be to show you an excerpt from a lesson being taught is probably uh, the best way to get a quick sense of it. For context, this particular lesson is comes from foundation year. Our program is foundation year one and year two with other years to come uh, shortly after. The lesson focus is slow subtraction. So the example I showed earlier was slow addition where you had the five plus three with the lines under the three equals eight. This is slow subtraction, very similar. And in terms of what came before, this is lesson 25 in the foundation year. Here is the lessons from 15 to 25. So you can get a sense of what came before. Uh, probably most pertinent is the fact that we introduced the idea of subtraction, not in a formal sense, but in terms of taking things away in the prior lesson, which built a good foundation for this idea of slow subtraction. But you'll also see a whole heap of uh, interleaving or mixing up of content before that, uh, purposefully and systematically as well. Uh, who, the pe person we're going to see uh, delivering this day is a windswept uh, Tony Hatton Roberts. Now, this is a foundation lesson, and we've trialed this foundation lesson in a number of uh foundation classrooms. Unfortunately, because of like recording permission issues, we couldn't bring you that. So what we've actually got is Tony teaching the lesson, but the students are a bit older than foundation, as I'm sure, as we're sure you'll be able to tell from their voices. So we've just got one minute of Tony teaching slow subtraction from the EMP now. Today, we are learning to take away. What are we learning to do? Take away. This symbol is called minus. What's it called? Minus. The symbol means take away. What does it mean? Take away. What's this symbol called Jade? Minus. What's this symbol called Chase? Minus. What's this symbol called Lucian? Minus. What's this symbol called Kayla? Minus. Well done. Okay, my turn listening. Five minus two equals how many? Your turn, read with me. Five, Five minus, minus two, two equals, equals how, how many? many? I'm going to show you how to solve takeaway problems like this. What's the first number? Five. I'll draw five lines below. Count as I draw. One, two, three, four, five. Let's find out how many lines are left. Count with me. One, One two, two, three. What number goes in the box? Three. Yes, three. 
So hopefully that you, that gave you a bit of a sense of what these lessons look like. A few things to note, real economy of language. Tony's only saying uh, what she needs to. It's super tight. High response rate. Like we looked at the minute then. I think the students responded probably about 12 or 13 times within a minute of instruction. And obviously it's a really clearly sequenced uh, and that perky pace that Wendy was talking about. So I guess a question you might have is like, what was Wendy looking at? How was she running that? Well, this is what this particular lesson looked like. So Tony was actually using a script, which is part of the EMP program. She was reading from it in the blue and the students were saying the red parts. So this is one of the lesson examples. I'll talk about a few of the other less scripted parts of the program in a moment. And then following this, students then went on to independent practice. So this is actually a sample of some of the large amount of independent practice that they then went on to following this particular lesson. But as I mentioned, not all lessons in EMP are structured exactly this way. So our lessons actually come in a block and a block includes three lessons, lesson A, lesson B, lesson C. So from this particular slow addition block, these are what these three lessons look like. First, we had slow subtraction, which is the lesson excerpt that you just saw. Lesson B was is about hold, what holds more and what holds less. And lesson C was about slow subtraction again, but it was actually a consolidation lesson. So you might notice that lesson A comes from number and algebra, and that lesson is completely scripted. Lesson B comes from measurement and space or statistics and probability, in this case, measurement and space. And this one is unscripted with guidance provided. And we'll show you an example of that in a moment. And lesson C comes from number and algebra, and it has a scripted option. Now, to quickly talk about the choices we've made around scripting and non-scripting, lesson A is always from number and algebra. Lesson B is also always from MSSP, and lesson C is always a consolidation lesson. The reason why we've always scripted lesson A is because number and algebra, primarily number in the primary years, is the absolute foundation for mathematical success for students. And it's where the precise language, the precise modeling, the opportunities for students to respond and every element of a lesson, the sequencing and everything needs to be absolutely dialed in for students to have the best chance of success. So, and, and also having a script provides teachers with an example of what a tight and high quality lesson can look like. It also makes it really easy for anyone to deliver the program. So uh, I've actually seen in some of our trial schools, CRTs deliver the program uh, from the script where they'd never seen it before and actually deliver a really high quality lesson uh, regardless. The reason why we've chosen to go with less scripted approaches for the MSSP is because this content actually lends itself more effectively to more creativity, more hands-on activities, more linking to real world resources and experiences. And whilst we wanted to provide a really highly structured program that leaves a very little wriggle room when it comes to the absolute core content, we still wanted to provide teachers with the opportunity to be creative, to draw on their own experience, to come up with fun activities for students, whilst there are also fun activities in the scripted parts as well. Um, to bring all of that creativity and collaboration into the program. So that's a bit of an overview of the structure of the lessons within the program. I mentioned that I'm gonna talk a little bit about what one of these less structured lessons looks like. So this is what they look like. So we don't actually say that you need to teach these lessons in any particular way, but we do provide guidance and the guidance ensures that every concept that's in the curriculum is addressed within uh, the program and fits. So this is kind of what it looks like. Basically, you've got a learning objective at the top, this lesson was about capacity or comparing capacity, more than or less than. A little idea for activating prior knowledge, uh, explicit concept teaching. And we've got some just advice general here. I'll give you 10 seconds to get a sense of that. So you can get a sense of that. And then we've got suggestions for I do, we do, and you do. As you can see, this is guidance. It's enough guidance to get uh, give teachers a really great head start. They don't have to end up on the internet kind of searching around for ideas. It's all there for them. It's all evidence-based and it's all integrated well into the rest of the program, but it also leaves lots of space for creativity or for teachers to take it in a different direction if they'd like to. So that's the first part, highly structured lessons. The next thing we wanted to talk about is the idea of formative and summative assessments built in. So a formative assessment example 
First thing to note is that formative assessments fall every five blocks. So, and those formative assessments will assess all of those five blocks. Mork talked about the importance of formative assessments being periodic, kind of recurring at a regular pace. And so that's why we put them every five blocks. That's enough time to kind of consolidate, but not too long that you're having to review too much content at any one time. This is what it looks like. You can see a whole heap of different skills being assessed here in a written component. And also in the younger years, there's often an oral component. And that's because there's things that students will have learned, like how to count from 72 to 78 in this example, starting at a, a, a non-tens uh, rounded number, for example, and counting on to 78 there, that you can't assess through uh, a written format. So it's really helpful to have that oral component there. And we've also got advice on how you can actually get some students to be working whilst you go around and quickly and efficiently do that oral assessment. The way all this data is then used, now you don't have to use the formative assessment diagnostic spreadsheet, but we give you the option. And if you wanna use it, this is kind of how it's gonna look. So basically you're gonna put in all your students' names. As stu soon as you put in students' names, a one will go in every cell. And this means that every, every answer is correct. But then all you have to do is add an N for any students who weren't present. It will take out their data. And then you're just gonna manually, if you want to, add in all the zeros for answers that students got incorrect. This is gonna very quickly tell you two things. Firstly, the students who might've been struggling uh, with in general and had a kind of a low or, or below average uh, average score or cumulative score, should I say, from the formative assessment. But probably more importantly, you're going to see the concepts that the students struggled with, and this is going to tell you what to revisit. So here I can see writing equals was a struggle for these students, and also subitizing the number 70 using bundling sticks was a challenge for them. What this tells us is that we can then use catch up or top up time that we've built into the program to address those challenge areas for students. Now, the program isn't fixed in terms of what you're going to do on which day, but we do we do have kind of suggested uh, suggested timetables or scopes and sequences. And in those suggested scopes and sequences, you can see we've built in this structured catch up or top up time. So that's formative assessments. What about summative? Well, summative look very similar to formative assessments, but they're just longer and more comprehensive. And we've ensured that they're scheduled to align with the natural reporting times within Australian primary schools. And we assist with that uh, reporting with our reporting assistant spreadsheet. So this is very similar to the formative assessment one. You put in all your students' names. It's going to enter the ones there. You then just enter your zeros. And then you select which curriculum you've been using. You can see the options here. Say if I choose the New South Wales curriculum. And for every single student, it's going to give an automatic suggested reporting level. Now this takes the guesswork out of reporting for teachers, automatically shows them a suggested reporting level, and he's gonna make that reporting uh, approach much quicker and much more efficient, and also much more reliable and much more consistent across your school. There's also a space for teacher judgment, for example, if a teacher has been, if a student should I say, has been absent. So that's a formative and summative assessment. And the final thing uh, that we're really excited to share is the idea of daily reviews and fluency practice. So as Mork showed before, a daily review ideally includes a whole heap of content. Uh, but when we look at this, it's like, well, how could we fit all of that into, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes if you're, we're kind of a stretching it? Well, here's a bit of an example. So here are the daily reviews uh, that we've created. This is for uh, foundation and as you can see, there are actually 4,533 slides here. So it's a lot of content uh, to get your head around. But let's say I'm working on block 18. I just click on block 18 and I'm doing the first lesson in that block, 18A. This is what a daily review is going to look like. Now, I'm just going to quickly sh uh, skim through it so that you can get a bit of a sense of what there, what's there. So there's, you can see there's counting, there's counting on, um, there's counting with the assistance of tens frames, Students are, you know, you've, we've got the whole script here for the teacher and then we've got uh, in lighter lighter text, a bit more guidance for the teacher. It's lighter so it doesn't distract the students. We've got counting, kind of subitizing with those 10 frames as well and counting on. We're counting with bundles. We're counting back one. We're counting backwards. We're working with the number line. More number line content more number line content. We're looking at uh, introductions to tens frame representations and so on and so forth. We'll see in a moment, we'll probably get to a bit of content. Here's some great subitizing. 
some work with mini whiteboards. I just want to get to that to show you what that looks like. We're looking at more or less. Bigger means more, smaller means less. Here we go. So time for mini whiteboards. Students are going to be reading the problem, working with it together to re read the problem and understand it. And then we're going to move into a little bit of work on whiteboards where they're actually chinning it and so on. They're splitting their whiteboard into four and they're actually doing some subitizing on that whiteboard, having a bit more of a robust assessment from the, from the teacher. So as you can see, I mean, that's just one daily review uh, out of 4,533 slides. Uh, extremely comprehensive uh, are these daily reviews. Really quick, really snappy, really uh, easy to get through. And following each daily review, once we've worked into the program and students are familiar with some of the, the the symbols that are required, there's fluency practice built in. So Tony spoke earlier about the absolute uh, crucial necessity of fluency for students. So we've built this in and you can see every bit of fluency practice includes both new facts, both review facts, and also some challenge facts for our students. Um, one question we anticipated or that we anticipate and one question that's, pro that's Fundamentally, the most important question to us is what is the impact? Now, we're really excited uh, to, to get more data on the impact uh, after, after launch at the start of 2025, but we have been using EMP in a number of trial schools, and we have some concrete data from one of those type trial schools who's been collecting some consistent data over a number of years. This trial school used PAT test in the middle of the year to identify in 2023 that in the middle of the year, out of their 50 students, 78% of students uh, were at at standard at or above standard so that was that was pretty good for them they were pretty happy with that they then started to use our program in foundation at the start of this year they actually didn't start they started in about halfway through uh term one they ran the same test halfway through this year and they actually found that 98 percent of their students were at or above standard that means that out of the 58 only one student was below standard and that particular student had missed 35% of lessons that year. Uh, and the school said that they're pretty confident that they, if they had have been there, they would have been on track with the other students. So for us, I mean, this is small sample, uh, one school, but for us, this is enough to suggest that this is really exciting for us and has really spurred on our, our continuing work uh, on the EMP. So again, EMP, highly structured lessons, formative and summative assessments, daily reviews and fluency practice based upon the six principles and much more. Uh, we thought we wanted to preempt the question around price uh, by saying that watch this space because we are exploring different printers at the moment, trying to get, keep the cost down as much as possible for schools and also our final page counts that we're just finalising now will have an impact. Uh, but we want to assure you that the price will be comparable to any existing programs you're using and as well as the keeping in mind the fact that the EMP does include everything, those daily reviews, the assessments, the assessment assistance, all of the lesson plans uh, and everything you, you need. So thank you so much for your attention today. Hopefully you found all parts of the presentation uh, interesting and stimulating. Uh, if you'd be like to be kept abreast of uh, all developments with the EMP, you can uh, scan there. And there's also opportunity for, for you to give us feedback because we're always keen to know whether the, particularly the earlier parts of our presentation around key things to keep in mind for effective mathematics uh, teaching were useful as well. That's it for us from the EMP, uh, but we're very, very happy to stick around and answer uh, as many questions as you've got on effective mathematics teaching.